here is the ultimate Zarya guide in Overwatch 2. Zarya is one of the best heroes in the game to learn the essence of Overwatch, with positioning, mechanics, and teamwork being super important to get value out of her. So with a return to strength in the meta, let's do a full overview of how to play Zarya perfectly in every matchup. We'll be talking game sense, mechanics, and macro of how to win teamfights and games in any type of situation, no matter which comp you're playing with or which comp you're playing against. Take a look at the description below for a link to a Game Leap membership. There's a lot of resources to help with your tanking, not just for Zarya, and even for DPS and support as well. So check it out to find even more information through guides, reviews, and other educational content to get better at Zarya and other tanks. Normally, I'd start by talking about Zarya's primary weapon, her particle cannon, but it really doesn't do much unless you've properly gathered charge. You need energy to activate Zarya's snowball potential. Let's start simple. You can deal more damage the more damage your bubbles take. So you want to build your charge by baiting damage with your bubble. You either bait by peeking corners yourself, or pushing aggressively for picks, or bubble your teammates to protect them from damage while they push, getting energy for the damage they soak in the process. The first thing is timing. You have to time both your bubbles right, and doing them too often or not often enough are the traps you can easily fall into. Make sure to use both your bubbles interchangeably. The most important thing is that you do it according to your own comp. If you have divers, you can give the bubble to them when they go in. If you have a team with more spammers holding space, you can use your self bubble to walk aggressively and take pressure away from your team holding behind you. That's how tanking works, posturing to get your team into the fight or distracting them so the enemy can't get into the fight, and a high energy Zarya in close range beaming is pretty distracting. So time your bubbles when you either push aggressively or help your teammates push aggressively. Before the fights, it's fine to use your bubbles defensively to build charge before the actual fight starts. But even so, you should try to take space first before instantly bubbling, passing a corner. Mostly against comps that don't spam a lot. Against Torbs, Bastions, Sims, Junks, basically all the defense heroes from Overwatch 1, you can easily get charge. Against other more precise characters, you should take space first or just run aggressively on a corner preferably with another ultimate or a Lucio speed boost. When you have two bubbles, you can use one to go aggressive and the other one to escape. Just make sure that you keep your footwork tight so you don't walk up too far and can't escape back to safety, preferably behind the corner. So now that you can build charge and play aggressively, what and how are you shooting? When you're close range, you can look to laser full track your targets, most often the person closest to you. When you run out of ammo, remember to go for a final right click before reloading to get the maximum damage out of your ammo usage. This is a classic old age trick, but it's really important to get it down. Zarya's gun actually has a sound cue for when it gets low ammo. So try to get a feeling for listening for that and then using the right click. This will help to start to learn Zarya's timing and her APM, actions per minute. When you start getting really good, you can get a feel of how much ammo you have just because of how long you've been shooting. When you start playing against more further ranges, don't only switch the grenade usage, but try to tap with your laser between aiming your grenades. The laser range is pretty good, and honestly, when they're out of your laser range, hitting your grenades is also less effective. Tapping with your laser helps to focus your aim instead of spamming your right clicks off cooldown, and also helps you to get some poke damage in even if you miss your grenades. It's basically more consistent damage, and that helps a lot for building your ultimate. Just like most tanks, whenever you can, prioritize the enemy backline instead of just the enemy tank. Zarya's damage at high charge is great, but it's not always consistent enough to break through healing on a tank, and sometimes isn't even enough to force cooldowns. That's why the utility of other tanks is better than Zarya most of the time, especially in forcing cooldowns. This is especially true against enemy Zaryas. It sometimes feels impossible to break through a medium charge Zarya alone, which is why you'll need to depend on your team. Your bubbles work best in combination with other abilities, like Reaper's Teleport, Genji's Dash, or Winston's Jump. Uh, we'll forget the last one, <laughs> tragically. But Bastion's turret form also works. It doesn't have to be the fastest diver engage. Even a slow but steady push can use the help from your barriers. That's all the complicated stuff about Zarya's macro. The rest of it is simple. It's just dealing damage with your primary fire and secondary fire. A Doomfist Winston ball wants to engage or Ryan wants to hold space. You are shooting. You are spamming. You're kind of like a third DPS in a way. Especially because your bubble is best used on other characters to help them take all the damage instead of you. With the macro out of the way, how do we use our mechanics? The best way to get good with Zarya's primary and secondary fire is just practice. Her primary, the age-old tracking laser, is pretty simple. It's a difficult skill to track, especially in a game like Overwatch, but it's pretty feasible to do when you get a feel for the ammo. Zarya does reload for a long time, so you can plan to go in with one big engage where you look to use your bubbles and use your whole ammo and then back off around a corner to go again. These cycles can help you focus your aim into specific moments in the game. Turn a corner, it's time to aim, back off, time to chill. You don't always have to sweat to get damage on the choke in the corner. Zarya's not really a spam hero, she's more about an accurate brawl. When you track, remember that you can use your own movement keys to manage 
manage people who are trying to strafe you. Keeping your aim focused on the enemy and then matching their movement will drastically help to track fast moving targets. Since tracking is all about predicting and reacting to where the enemy is going. Try to avoid reloading too much. Just play for those cycles, you don't always have to use your bubble during it, and then beam as hard as you can. Make sure to also use high ground when you can. Zarya is really strong when she has an off angle, just like a third DPS. Oasis has a lot of high grounds Zarya can use that are still close range enough for her to transform into the brawl phase. King's Row 3rd is another great example of strong high grounds that are still close to the teamfight. Finally, polish up on your grenade aim as well. It's really important that when you do go for the right click instead of the laser, that you hit it. Go for quick flicks and make sure to practice your fair share of air shots. Hitting a long range grenade with Zarya is one of the best feelings in the world. Now let's move on to the comp matchups. How do we play in different comps, both friendly and enemy? Let's start with the most effective Zarya comps, but Zarya doesn't brawl exactly like Ryan would or even Ramatra. You want to play skirmishy and then commit on one fast engage where everyone walks forward. But in this case, walking is just using most of your movement cooldowns or pushing forward consistently. Usually when you're playing a brawl comp with Zarya, you have a Lucio and then some close range damage dealer. You can use the Lucio's speed to get aggressive and stay in your effective damage range and support your aggressive DPS with bubbles, giving you charge as well. With Lucio, you're basically just cycling bubbles on your DPS and then pushing aggressively when you have good charge and good bubble health. You want to have about 1.5 bubbles, basically one bubble ready to go and another bubble coming up soon. But make sure to try to push first with damage, using your damage to force abilities instead of just running around a corner and pushing hard. Bubbles are great, but they're best used in skirmishes. You don't want to start them off at the beginning of the fight and not have enough for the rest. So focus on getting energy using your DPS and playing corners, then pushing with your damage that you've accumulated through your charge and then use your bubbles to support even further pushing and run over the front line. Using your damage to push instead of your bubbles at the very start is also really important when you're playing against bunker comps with Arissa and Bastion. Their cooldowns are so strong that you have to bait them first, but luckily, Zarya is pretty good at doing that. Just make sure you don't stray too far when going aggressive for damage to force abilities. Against brawl comps, it's kind of similar. You have to toe the line and bait cooldowns before you go crazy hard. Remember that sometimes brawl comps are going to be more dangerous than an Orisa Bastion. They can really run over you fast, lock you off with a wall, a sim beam can charge really aggressively fast on you. Rush is generally considered a wholesome, skillful comp, but when you're a Zarya with no other mobility besides your grenade jump, it's pretty difficult to play at a safe range. No matter who you're playing against, make sure not to play too too scared. You don't want to be forced off the objective because you're so scared of getting one shot. Putting a pressure on Zarya is pretty scary for enemy teams since they know they can feed her for a lot of energy and damage. And finally, playing against dive comps as a brawl comp. You as the Zarya want to go really aggressive early before the dive comes in. It's harder to get charged against these comps, but that's why you should really get up in their face and force them to look at you instead of your backline. Things like hacks and antis don't work as well against Zarya since you can cleanse them. Just make sure that you don't get caught in a Winston bubble, since Zarya with no bubbles will definitely die unless she's pocketed, compared to Orisa or even Winston for example who can jump away. So now let's finish with Zarya playing in dive comps and in poke comps. When you're playing Zarya in a dive comp, usually you'll have a Genji or Tracer. You want to play mid-range, as you usually do, in order to get line of sight to where your DPS are going to be flanking. You want to support them with a bubble when they push that flank, and then hang back a little bit while you wait for your charges to recover. A flanker and diver with a bubble is undefeatable. Either you get a lot of charge, or they get to go full throttle maximum DPS if no one's shooting at them. Bubbles are best used aggressively, but if you do want to save them defensively for a pulse bomb or another aggressive ult, that's great. Just remember that your position has to be a lot more passive. If you have to save one bubble for defending somebody else, the other bubble will have to either defend you or not be used to go aggressive with your DPS. My main motto for playing this game is to play to win, not to delay the loss. Even if you're playing reactively or defensively, you need to have a plan to go aggressive after the fact. Lucio's beat isn't the greatest when used to go in, but when used after the enemy has already committed, especially with an ultimate, it's really good. So focus mostly on going in with your bubbles and helping your DPS go hard. Finally, if you're playing a poke comp with a lot of spam, like the rest of your team, focus on putting a lot of damage into the main tank. Depending on the comps you play against, if you're a Zarya and a poke comp, you might be wanting to defend yourself or defend your backline. So just save your bubbles accordingly and play more defensive. You still want to be active in dealing damage, but you don't need to use your bubbles very aggressively because your team has a lot of spam damage to make up for your low charge. If you can get charged from random spam, 100% go for it, especially before the fight, because any damage is good damage. Just remember to not play too fast and die for it. Poke comps nowadays are really good at inching up aggressively and pretty fast compared to an Overwatch 1. Most poke comps have pretty good ways of escape, but as a Zarya, you don't have many options, so play your position really 
really smart. Playing the back of the point at Zarya is probably the best place to be. Be it a control point or a payload, it's always great to be at the back of the payload, fighting people who want to contest you, but also able to really easily escape when you need to. I want to finish by briefly talking about Zarya's matchups and counters. One of Zarya's weaknesses is ironically her bubbles are getting completely ignored and broken. Even a 225 HP bubble is not going to save a Reaper if he TPs into the middle of the enemy team. He's basically going to have to Wraith instantly after teleporting. Otherwise, he'll explode. Most comps nowadays are capable of doing 500 damage to a Reaper TPing in, especially if they see it coming beforehand. So again, make sure to add cooldowns to your bubble usage so they don't get focused down too aggressively and you have a lot more people pushing with you so the bubble gets a lot of value but doesn't get fully focused down. The other weakness is playing against tanks like Ryan and Winston who can easily avoid giving you charge and hold close space against you. It's almost impossible to push through a bubble and definitely not Ryan shield. So focus on playing more of the slow game defensively if you meet these characters. Look to push forward with a resource advantage after the Ryan or the Winston push aggressively. You can probably use one bubble defensively for your team and then use your second self bubble to go aggressive once the Winston bubble is forced or the Ryan shield is very low. Remember that when the enemy team is falling back you can be a lot more liberal with your bubbles because no one can really punish you. That's where you get the big damage and the big charge. Thanks for watching. Zarya is really strong right now, but she's a pretty difficult hero to master. So get out there and do your best.